Hey, garden friends. I want to take you on a January garden tour, and I will admit this is going to be short because there's not a whole lot to see. But you kind of get an idea of what winter looks like at Flower Patch. And forgive the ugly blue tarp behind me. That's just what's covering our wood to keep it from getting wet. So let's get rolling on our quick January garden tour. Hey, garden friends. Thought I'd bring you on a January, this is mid-January, garden tour of Flower Patch Farmhouse. Now, this time of year, there's not a whole lot to see as far as plants because it's covered under a lot of snow and even ice. And this, all, all of this is pretty icy. And look, even right there, you see the icicles on my clematis. Now, last year, I did not prune back my clematis. This is, these are both type twos and they bloomed so beautifully. Now, I'm gonna see if I can get this to show you. Look at that, there's a little bud on it already. So I'm gonna do the same. I'm just gonna leave them. I'm not gonna prune them back till after their first bloom and then I will probably cut them back by half and see if I can get a rebloom. Not all of them will rebloom well. Um, others will, and usually a, a reputable site like Brushwood Nursery specializes in clematis. They will tell you. Now, this clematis here on this arbor, this one um, is a double, and it's Bell of Walking, W-O-K-I-N-G, and it bloomed nonstop. It, it had a first flush of lots of blooms, and then it just kept blooming and kept blooming here and there, but it was enough to be just absolutely gorgeous. And I went ahead and left it climbing here instead of cutting it back because um, it may do the same thing. So it may have blooms all the way up first out of the box and then I can cut it back and it will keep blooming. Now all my roses are just, you know, a lot of them are needing defoliating and I will share with you why. Let's see. These ones aren't looking black. Well, yeah, look at these. They're looking pretty nasty. Can you see that? Anyways, they uh, need the leaves pulled off. This is a type 1 clematis, type pruning type, and that means you don't prune it except for if you want to shape it right after blooming because it blooms on old wood. So this one is sugar sweet lilac. So that's why it is still hanging in there and not being cut back. I'm going to walk very carefully because this is just pure ice down here. It looks like snow, but it really is ice. So everything nice and buried. Oh, here's a good example of why I need to defoliate. You see the black, black powdery mold on there? Yeah, that's not good. And I can get to it a little bit here and there. And I just take the uh, foliage off, strip it off. This is Gertrude Jekyll, David Austin Rose. It seems to be doing okay. But I will probably defoliate it as well. This is um, my Zephyrin Drone, Druin, however you pronounce that. And it is notorious for getting that powder black mold on it. And that's why I wanted it away from my porch post. Because I used to have it climbing up the porch post, but it would leave black that you could not scrub off all over it. And it just was ugly. Oops, sank. Okay. So here is my, what I call my studio patio. There's just violas growing up crazy through all the stepping stones there, pavers. So I left them. And so hopefully that'll be really, really pretty this spring. They'll bloom very early. But as I said, not a whole lot to see. I'll turn around, show you up. This is the Rose Cottage Garden. And there's climbing roses along all of the arbors. And there's some obelisks that uh, both of them I think have roses against them but it's just everything's white and covered even my poor little boxwoods in my planters here now this is a little bit of a hill I gotta take it slow because I could slide easy and end up on my bum which I don't want to do and back down here is the secret cottage garden. 
Still not a whole lot to see. So, but it is January. This is what it typically looks like. Last year it had even more on it. I'm thankful this year that it's been very light so far, as far as snowfall. We haven't had a lot, and then tomorrow we're supposed to get a lot of rain, which this will be melted off before we get more. So maybe I'll take you back, bring you back after tomorrow, and we'll see how much it actually melted. So down over here, my DIY greenhouse is doing wonderfully. I still have a gap to fill in there on the side. I didn't want to buy a whole box of these panels just for that one gap, so I need to come up with an alternate fix. I think I had some pieces I could, you know, jigsaw, not jigsaw, but puzzle together and make, fill that up. But my Vigo garden bed, I want to get, I did seed some lettuce in it, but it'll be a while. And there's the chickens down in there. I just bought that chopped straw bedding. I got to get it spread in there so everything stays drier. And did I ever show you my cover of the greenhouse? Because my greenhouse gets punched out from snow bombs from the tall, tall trees, they drop big old massive tree bombs and it punches out the roof of my greenhouse. I found this cover that had the grommets and bungees that you can fasten it with. That way, before we were using the rolls of plastic that you get it like um, as drop cloth or something, at the hardware store and it would last one season then you had to throw it away and I kind of hated that having to throw it away so this is supposed to last over five years and it worked well as far as being able to attach it with the bungees so here's another arbor here this is where it's beside the studio I mean beside the greenhouse and it um it's been a trouble spot because it doesn't, it gets hot sun during part of the summer and then the rest of the time it gets shade. So it doesn't work as a shade garden and it doesn't work for sun loving plants. I was thinking of planting a little bit of lawn here just to have one green space and just be able to enjoy that. And it wouldn't take too much water for that one little section. So here's another rose that I'm trying to air layer. See the little thing? Hopefully that will work. So that's a beautiful climber. Pretty pretty pink one. This one I was gonna move because this but the flowers get so roasted in the summer. But in this fall it was so beautiful once it cooled off. So there's the they're thinking I'm gonna come give them treats, so I will after I'm done here. But over there's the little DIY greenhouse. I am going to, like I said before, I may have mentioned it, I'm gonna put some of my winter sewing jugs in there and see how that works uh, as far as with winter sewing. And come spring, when it's closer to spring, I will see sow some seeds in the jugs just to see how that would work for that. So some warmer like zinnias and cosmos and stuff like that. Okay, yep, my hen house still needs a revamp. And back into the greenhouse. I know this is a short tour because there's not a whole lot to see. But I've been working in here making videos for you. Ooh, that neem meal, I could smell it now. <laughs> really powerful. So, yeah, I also am going to go spend some time in Primrose Cottage. I'm working on that painting tutorial for you guys. And I need to keep on cleaning. I've got a bunch of things I need to haul to my basement just for storage to get them out so I can have space in there. So, January garden tour, all the gardens. Okay, I need to go check in and see how their food is doing. I bought some, another bag yesterday. Oh yes, pumpkin. Spice doesn't crow as much as pumpkin does, but they have two distinctive crows. That's how I could tell. Okay, girl. Hop down. Ooh, what a mess you guys are getting up here. Alrighty, yep. We need to refill ya. Okay, I'll get my husband on that. Look at them. They're all enjoying their alfalfa. I got a big bale here. And that gives them some greens. And then here is their scratch, which they love to watch them go crazy. Chicken crack. 
Yeah. Ah. Give them a couple of handfuls. They love that. Also, it helps them to uh, raise their body heat. So it's good. Good day for that. Okay. Well, I'll go holler at my hubby. No eggs in there today. Yet. And then, yeah, I also have a bale of rice hulls to put down because I can see their wood flakes is getting moist. The rice hulls work really well. They seem to stay drier longer. Okay, enough, enough with the chickens. Back to the cottage. Well, here is after the rain. The snow has melted some, but not as much as I would have liked. So, um, yeah, the snow has done a little bit of damage, not too much, but it wasn't that much. What was bad was, one thing, we procrastinated on taking down this little uh, pop-up tent cover. This was from Costco. We used it about three years out here. It wasn't always the prettiest, most attractive thing, but it suited our purposes for providing shade in the summer, giving us a spot out here to sit under it, um, and I loved it. We've debated on getting one of those wooden ones from Costco out here because it's something, it's a structure that would hold up in the snow. And since we use this every year here and need a cover, we just thought maybe something like that more permanent would work rather than taking one of these tents down and put it back up each year. But we hadn't taken it down yet. It had already started ripping. So we were debating on whether just to chuck the whole thing and get a new one next year or um, just buying a new cover for it, which I did find a place that did carry the covers. Um, but now the decision's been made for us because we didn't get a chance to get it taken down. And even though the cover was already ripped, it caught enough snow to just mangle the frame. So we're going to have to get out here with bolt cutters, cut this up and haul it off. It's just not been priority right now. I was going to take you back around. Do you remember my jasmine I did? This is just holding up beautifully. I was worried it wouldn't overwinter. We've had some very cold nights, like down into the teens. And so far, this has done well. This is a pink jasmine. So I have high hopes for it. Still beautifully, beautiful evergreen. Um, yeah, so that's a win so far. I'm loving it. I never did plant up this other deck box, but I am going to use it um, as a pattern. I'm going to make some more myself to put in different spots, but I'm just going to use that as a, to measure and all of that. So here, let's go down the stairs. We did get the steps all shoveled off. I shouldn't say we, my husband did. And here is the secret cottage garden. Now you see there in the mental, mental middle is the circle garden. That is where I'm going to put the petunias that I start from seed. And I just posted that video of starting seeds and I made a major blunder. So stay tuned to coming up. I will share that blunder and uh, hopefully prevent anyone else from making it too. So yeah, that's coming up this week. And so the snow, it after a few days, it starts to look dirty and grubby. And I know at first it all looks so pretty, but then it just looks, you know, grungy and uh, not pretty at all and it gets in the way and I don't like slipping and sliding when I walk on it but other than that yeah it's just coming along out here and this is what it's like in mid-January I have those two raised beds back there there's one there and then one over here I had started a video on how I filled them up um, I probably need to finish that up and share all of that. But so those are, I put those back. It, I wasn't able to share that for you. Sorry, my watch is talking to me. Um, these have mesh on the bottom to protect from gophers. So now I can plant flowers in there that I know the gophers eat and not have to worry about them. It's just been, I've given up trying to get rid of them. I wish a gopher snake would move in. But, so in the meantime, I am just gonna protect my plants, the ones I know they love, and go from here. 
just find a way around it if you can't fix it. So, so after the rain, so we're supposed to get more rain today, thankfully, and not more snow. And then we're actually supposed to get near 50 degrees a couple days, which is going to be really nice. So, in the meantime, this is what the garden looks like in mid-January. Thank you for coming along. I'll see you next time. Bye. One last note. I've always got one last note, don't I? This is the Highland Cow painting tutorial I was working on. Uh, it's taken me a bit. It's taking me a bit to really get it to where I like it. And I'm just taking it as slow and easy and as relaxing as I can. But I'm trying to make it easy for beginner painters. So that's why it takes me a little bit longer to flesh out how I'm going to paint it and teach it. So stay tuned for my sweet little Highland cow. So garden friends, I hope you enjoyed our tour on this cold January day. And I'll bring you back probably in February. We'll do another quick tour and see how things look then, just to keep a journal of how the garden progresses through the seasons. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and or share with your friends. Maybe somebody wants to see a bunch of snow. I don't know. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye.